Well, today we're talking about onions. The top 10 onion questions from our viewers out there we're going to attempt to answer so that you can be growing your very own onions on your homestead. Welcome to the Road by Road Gardening Show, the best dead gum gardening show on the internet where we talk about gardening, a little bit of cooking, and growing your own food. Now sit back and enjoy. Hey folks, glad to have you here. Greg and Mama Hoss Hi. in the house. We're talking onions. Oh, we're talking no. great things about onions. And not only that, we got some good eats. The garden is starting to give up for the fall. Give up for the fall. So our neighbor, you want to talk about these? Do you know the names of them? Not right off the top of my head, I don't. One ball. Yep, green gorilla. Right. No, uh -uh. That's not? That's eight ball. Eight ball, okay. Cue ball. Cue ball, okay. Hope I got that right. We got the ball squash going on. All right. So Valerie, our neighbor, she was in one of my videos about raised beds. I've been teaching her or mentoring her how to garden. And she's doing raised bed gardening and they're looking doing a really good job. And you helping her husbands with tomatoes. Tomatoes and everything. Yeah. So we live in a very rural area, which I'm assuming most of you guys do as well. We have neighbors, but we don't have close neighbors. They're, you know, we can see their house from our house, but they're not real. We're not stacked on top of one another because we got 10 acres here where we live. But we have a great, great neighborhood. We're Real close with all our neighbors, we help one another out, and uh, we have some. We're helping gardening right now, as Sheila mentioned. But a guy told me one time this right here, and this is true. He said, "There's nothing better than having a good neighbor, and there's nothing worse than having a bad one." Is that a lot, a lot of truth to that? Yes. Well, we are fortunate enough; we got all good neighbors. We help one another out. We watch out for one another. I mean, if something strange is going on at somebody's house, pick up the phone and we you know, call them, ask them, and look out for one another, which really makes it cool living out in the country like we do. Would you agree with that, Shane? I agree. It's wonderful. They look after for us when we're gone. We yep. look after them. Right. So this is also their Savannah mustard mm -hmm. that I helped her plant on that video, and her squash. And some bacon. And some bacon. Now this Savannah squash, we had Tracy on from Chicago last week. She talked about this uh, squash, Savannah mustard. <laughs> she talked about it a little bit last week. It's actually not a true mustard, but it's between a mustard and a spinach. And it is absolutely wonderful. You know, for you guys out there that don't like that hot, tangy type mustard taste, we was raised on it. Mm -hmm. But if you're not a fan of it, I get that. But this Savannah... It only takes three weeks. It's pretty quick. It's, it's 45 days or so. Right. Then also, look there for my garden. Mm. This was at, this is Max Pack. This is like a pickling cucumber. Um, but these actually volunteered back up, and I almost didn't let them go. I don't know if it's seeds that didn't. I don't know. But anyway. Anyhow, you got cucumbers. I got cucumbers. Mm. And we love cucumbers. How's that? That's delicious. So these squash here, we, as long as, as, as well as our neighbors, have become extremely fond of as far as eating quality. Now you do them a little bit different than you normally would squash. The way we've been doing it is slice them. Okay, actually these were not sliced like I normally do. When she fixed them at the night, they wedged them. Yep. And put them in the oven, doctor them up with spices, of course. Yeah, just some olive oil and your seasoning for on 400 for about 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then put your cheese on there mm -hmm. and cook them under broil for three minutes. Is that good? It's very good. You want to try a cucumber? Mm-hmm. So it's that time of the year where we got to be talking about onions, and that's the reason we're talking about onions tonight. You know, most people don't plant onions because it's kind of out of season here in the south. Now, you people up north, y'all plant y'all's onions in the springtime, and then you gather them in summertime. Us here in the south, we grow a short day type onion, and we plant ours in the fall, and we overwinter them, 
and we harvest them in March. I'm going to apologize for my crunching. <laughs> <laughs> that bothers some people. I know. Those cucumbers are crunchy. They are crunchy. What did you put on? Some balsamic vinegar. Mm. Your cabbagers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So, in our opinion, everybody should be growing onions on their homestead. And you know what? You can grow them in containers if you do not have an outside garden. Containers work pretty good. Mm -hmm. So, let's talk about the 10 top questions we got from our viewers on onions. Yeah, we went back through our emails and our customer service and collected the top 10 questions you as viewers have asked us about growing onions. So, we're going to go from the least one to the most popular question. So, starting out at number 10. This is like Dave Letterman's top 10. Top 10. Top 10. Number 10, can I grow a Vidalia onion? So Vidalia onions is a legal term <clears throat> that's been copyrighted. And for it to legally be a Vidalia onion, it's got to be grown in 20 counties that surround the town of Vidalia, Georgia, or that's in that general vicinity there. Vidalia onions are legally have to be grown in that area. They also have to come from an approved variety list. So not only do they have to be grown there, but they have to come from, they have to be a particular variety that's been approved by the state of Georgia. And this is from a Vidalia Onion Act of 1986? Mm, sounds about right. Yeah. So they got together back in the day and did this, it's really a marketing type thing. The Georgia uh, Department of Agriculture kind of got together and they created this thing here. And it's fine, it's wonderful. It does create some confusion. So. To answer your question, if you live in those 20 counties around Vidalia, Georgia, and you grow a Vidalia approved variety, yes, your onions are legally and technically Vidalia onions. However, if you do not live in that 20 county around Vidalia, Georgia, but you grow a Vidalia seed, approved seed, you can grow a Vidalia type onion. Now, the state of Texas has a lot of sweet onions in it as well. And I'm going to be completely upfront. I think a lot of onions in Texas are just as sweet as Vidalia onions. And we can grow an onion just as sweet so as Vidalia. So what about Vidalia soil makes it? Well, the theory is that it's a combination of sulfur in the soil and fertility that makes the onion really sweet. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the theory behind it. Uh -huh. Now we have three, I'm going to mention three Vidalia approved varieties on our website that you can order if you want to plant your own seed of Vidalia type onions, and that is, we're gonna pop them up here, Plethora, which is a very large onion, and we also have another one called Savannah Sweet. Now, is that not a lovely name, mm -hmm. Savannah Sweet? And we have a red one called Sofire. So those three right there are grown up in Vidalia, Georgia as Vidalia onions. Those are Vidalia approved varieties, so you can buy those and you can grow them. Now, it also makes a dip, whether it's a sweet onion or not, you need to grow, I say you need to grow. There is some varieties out there besides that. One we got, we got Texas, we're out of stock on, but we're getting some in. Texas 1015Y, that is a sweet onion, but it's not a Vidalia approved variety. And we got a Texas granite on our website as well. That's not a Vidalia approved variety, but it is a sweet onion as well. So those is the varieties I would plant if I was wanting a Vidalia or a sweet type onion. Okay. Number nine, how do you cure onions? So when our onions get ready to harvest, and I think that's coming a little later on there, we like to pull our onions up on a nice sunshiny day. You don't want to pull your onions when you got rain in the forecast. You want to make sure that you got good weather for a couple of days. We pull our onions, we just lay them right there on the ground, and we let them stay for a day or two and let them dry out a little bit. Then we take them and put them into an area that is shaded, that has nice cool breeze underneath there. That would there. be question number eight. Mm -hmm. How do you I'm get, store? I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah, sure. But that's the way we cure our onions. We pull them out of the garden. We let them lay for a day or two right there. Let them dry up. And then we pick them up and kind of shake that dirt off of them. Mm -hmm. And we're ready to get into the storing process, which is number eight. Yeah. Mm. Okay. 
Oh, we got that. Let's yeah. go on to number seven. Well, I didn't completely. <laughs> All right. Okay. Store onions in a dark location. We got nice uh, ventilation there, and they'll store for months. That's the way we store them. Okay. You done? Yep, I'm done. Move on. Number seven. How do you know when to harvest? Uh, when about half of your tops flop over. And they just one day they're, they're up. They just one day and they flop over. The next over. day they over. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna throw this out there for you guys out there just plant elephant garlic along with your onions. This happens to me about every year. My elephant garlic comes in just about every time about two weeks after I harvest my onions. Mm -hmm. You can about set your clock on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was just bonus there? That was bonus, yeah. Bonus. Number six, what's the difference between an onion set and an onion slip? An uh, onion set is what you'll see in the grocery store, not a grocery store, the hardware store. You'll see them in tractor supply and you'll see them in a lot of garden centers. And they're this box of onion bulbs. And most of them are about the size of maybe a golf ball or less. And they're dried onion bulbs there. And these can be planted and make onions and they store really well. So it is an onion grown from a previous crop that didn't get to maturity. It got dug in the process between it was planted and it started making the bulb there. When it started bubbing, they dig these things, they dry them out, they cure them, and they give them, make them available for sale. You can plant onion uh, sets and make onions if you're lucky. An onion slip or an onion plant, however, is grown from seed and normally six to eight weeks it produces a green top and a little bit of a bulb at the bottom, and that is an onion plant. Now, onion plant does not have the life, shelf life, of what onion set. Onion sets will last for a long time, so you don't have to be in no hurry to plant those. When you get your onion plants, you need to plant them sooner than later because you have more success if you plant them. They deteriorate really quick, so you need to plant them. Now, why would I want to plant an onion plant over an onion set? Most of the time, I'm going to say 95% of the time, you do not know what kind of onion that onion set is. It could be an intermediate day, it could be a long day, it could be a short day. They don't necessarily grow these sets as the type of onions you need to plant for your area. Example, here in the state of Georgia, you need to plant, in Florida as well, you need to plant a short day type onion. The only way you can really know you're getting a short day type onion is by buying onion seed and plant them yourself or by buying onion plants. So I think you normally have more success growing big onions by growing from seed or an onion plant than buying from sets. Now you may get lucky every now and then and grow a decent sized onion from sets. Most of the time they don't get real big. And you and, don't know what they are. And you don't know what they are. They could be hot onions or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the deal there. All right. Number five, does trimming the top of the green onions improve the bulb size or growth? Yes, if you're growing from seed to plant, trimming the tops helps that onion start bubbing up. Once we put the, the transplant or the plant into the ground, we do not ever trim the tops there. But yes, it does help tremendously if you're growing your onions to transplant in trays or in the ground as a little onion so bed. So while they're in the greenhouse? Yes, you want to trim them several times. Once they're in the soil, don't. Once they're in the soil, you transplant them. We don't eat more after that. Okay. Question number four, should I transplant or direct seed? Either or. So the great thing about that is if you're up for it and you want to grow your own transplants, I think it's a great skill set to have and we've done it several times. We normally like to grow ours out in a 338 tray. I've got some planted now. Have they come up? No, they've not come up. I just uh -huh. looked down this morning. They've not come up yet, but we grow them in a 338 tray. We keep them trimmed back. It normally takes about six weeks to grow our plants out. If you do have a small raised bed, you could also uh, seed them in there and keep them wet and grow them there and just simply pull them when you need to transplant them. However, if you don't want to go through all that and you don't want to do all that, you can buy plants. And we do have plants on our website. We'll show you a, uh, a link right here. So you can order your own Vidalia type 
varieties from us and we'll ship them around the first of And November. they're actually being grown in Vidalia. They're being grown, well, they're, they've been grown in one of the 20 counties that is Vidalia onion okay. approved in Glenville, Georgia, which is right outside. Does that make them a Vidalia onion? Makes them a Vidalia onion. So if you buy plants from us, plants from us, and you live in one of those 20 counties there, you can be growing Vidalia onions. If you're not growing in one of those 20 counties there, and you buy plants from us, you will be growing Vidalia type right. onions. Okay. We got to keep the legality good here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we wouldn't want to get in trouble. No, no, no. Question number three. How much water do they need? And I'm going to combine the next one and fertilizer. Water, normally about a, uh, an inch per week. And you know, that time of year for us over winter, we normally get rain. <coughs> You know, it's kind of on, on the fertility. Uh, we got a, on our onion growing guide, and I'm gonna throw this up here, onion growing guide. We have a schedule on there for raised beds and in ground, as you see right there. So you can go check that out on drip tape. Man, you know, you can get by without drip tape with onions if you're growing short day onions because it is through that rainy period there, but it does make it really nice that so you can inject that fertilizer more. The last probably, Four or five years, I've used drip tape, and it works pretty good because I can inject my 20-20-20 into my ammonia sulfate because onions love sulfur. They're heavy feeders. They're heavy feeders. They need to be on the schedule. Yep. And a couple of mistakes people make with onions, another bonus right here, okay? Okay. A couple of mistakes they make is they plant the wrong kind of onion for their area, and they fertilize them wrong. You fertilize them heavy early on and you stop fertilizing 30 to 45 days before you're ready to dig them. So if you normally dig them in March, you need to stop fertilizing about 30 to 45 days before that. When move. they start bulbing. When they start bulbing, yep. And that can happen overnight too. It can. All right, are you ready? I'm ready. What variety, this is number one. Yep. What variety should I grow? Wow, what variety should you grow? You should grow the, uh, oh man, that's a tough one there. That's where you need the map. Yeah, it's where you need the map here to know what, you said what variety. You talking about what type? Yeah. What, okay, the type is going to oh, be a different variety. <laughs> All right, so what type you need to grow. Yeah. Uh, we're going to put this map up there on the screen there, and you see the short day, intermediate day, long day. Go to our website there and you can filter on which one of these, which type of these you want and you can pick from there. Uh, I have several different favorites in that bunch there, but you really can't make a bad decision. All good onions there. Now, uh, I got a couple, I got another bonus thing. Ben's also, one, before we move that, um, what time to plant? Okay, so you need to plant your short day onions. You can go to Onion Growing Guide Kitchen. Short day onions I like to plant in November. Intermediate day onions you're gonna plant in early spring and long day onions you're gonna plant in spring. So you can go to our Onion Growing Guide there and check out, check out the specifics on that. And before we leave this, if you, what happens if you plant a short day onion in the north? It's just not gonna, it's not gonna get a big, be a big onion. You're gonna have a decent sized little onion but to get big, mature onions, you got to plant the correct type for your area because of daylight length. Right, so I was reading it said if you plant a short day up north, it's gonna start bulbing too quick right. and you're not gonna get a big onion. Right. If you plant a long day in the south, it's the opposite. It's never gonna probably bulb because it doesn't have the long daylight yeah. layers. Yeah, I mean, you're gonna have a little bit of an onion there, but not, not much. Everybody wants to grow those big old fancy onions. You know, we had somebody come out here a few years ago and oh, she man. gave me some onions. She it called was them as big as that. Strawberry onions. And uh, she was a friend of mine, still is. And I said, there's no such thing as a strawberry onion. And we got into a little debate on that. And what happened was after I questioned her, she purchased these down in Plant City, Florida. Down in Plant City, Florida, they grow onions in between their strawberries and they call them strawberry onions. And they normally grow a really big, nice, sweet onion but it's just slang term for a strawberry onion. They were really pretty. Mm -hmm. All right, so what makes an onion sweet? Mm -hmm. So there is a particular acid called pyr, I'm gonna, I'm gonna butcher this up. Pyruvic. 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 Pyruvic acid is what makes a onion pungent. 
So that is what they measure to see the pungency of the onion. And they have a pyruvate scale that they measure that when they do testing for Fidelia onions. Mm. So that they, they measure it's graded according to that. So like Pepper's Scoville scale? Right. Mm. Excuse me. And now, uh, you know, we've talked about why you, you you get a sweet onion. They say it's fertility. They say it's sulfur in the soil. We know onions, we like to put sulfur in our fertilizer there. But I thought that was interesting, pyruvic acid. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason they do so much testing on varieties for the Vidalia bunch up there is to test how, what what pyruvic scale <laughs> each variety trouble. comes on. It has to fall within a particular category uh -huh. before it's a Vidalia approved variety. Okay. Mm. So folks, all this is on our onion growing guide under Halls University on our yep. website. Yep. So if you miss something, go to our Hulsh University page, Onion Growing Guide. Did you have a corny joke this week? I did not. We're going to miss the corny joke? We're going to miss the corny joke. And you didn't do a corny joke? I oh, know. I was going to let you do it. No, I didn't. No, you didn't. We had some sent to us, too. Um, strawberry plants still for sale? We have a few strawberry plants left. Not a lot. I looked at it this morning. We don't have many at all, but we have a few. So if you haven't got those, get those. We're going to be shipping those out before you know it. Onion plants. And onion plants. We've got a few onion plants left, so uh, check that out. And you know what? If you don't have a raised bed that's ready or you don't have a spot tilled up, try growing them in some root pouches. Yeah, root you can pouches. do that. And we're shipping out garlic this week. We're shipping out garlic this week. We're going to be shipping out garlic this week and next week. we got a shipment of elephant garlic in this week. We're getting another shipment in next week. And our guys are busy back there in the back getting those out. And we got a load of organic German garlic in. Mm -hmm. Those are already all sold out. You know, they, is a, they have been, I had a couple of phone calls in the last two or three days about this right here. They've been a pretty good shortage of seed garlic and elephant garlic for the last three or four years. Mm -hmm. And we have a hard time sourcing it. Uh, we sold out of German garlic. Quick. Quick. So we've got it, and we don't have much elephant garlic left, very little mm -hmm. there. As far as I know, we can't get any more. So some of these things are still tied out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm going to be planting some uh, multiplying onions before long. You gonna have some for yeah. sale? I don't know. We're gonna check. I got to check to see what my stock and how they held up, stored over the summertime. I didn't plant any like I did last year to grow over mm -hmm. the summer. I just dug them and put them in the barn. So I got to check to see how they held up and uh, what my stock is there. But anyway, that's all good stuff. Right, Fall see. garden is is fun. You got worlds of stuff you can do there with garlic and onions, strawberries. I got broccoli looking good. We greens, got greens. Lettuce. Believe it or not, I got a good many zinnias growing in here. Oh, you do, yeah. I got some new, new, unique varieties that I'm testing out out there, which is just amazing to me. Mm -hmm. So if you have any comments or questions about onions that we didn't cover, put them in the comments below. Yep. What? what no. We're no goat this week. I'm just really failing. Yeah, you are. No, I didn't. You didn't know. We'll have to catch up next week. We'll have to do two goat drawings next week. Two goat drawings. If you find the old goat on the set, put in the comments where it is, and we'll do two drawings next week. Yep, I got to finish up this here Savannah mustard. I might put a little too much salt on it's it. It's really good to me. Yep. Not too salty. And the cucumbers. Yeah. Mm. All right, folks, thank you for joining us. Onions, 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 fall time to plant onions if you're in the south. Short day type. Now get off that couch and get out there and get dirty. <laughs>